Welcome to another Seed to Harvest episode. Before we get started, I wanted to give you a friendly reminder that the content you're about to watch is strictly an educational documentary backed by science and research. I do not in any way recommend the use of controlled or regulated substances. So please be responsible, use common sense, and make sure to do your own research. We just try to take flight, fuck a passport. In my bag, I ain't even pack a bag yet. Always spend too much money at the airport. This week, we're gonna review a strain you guys have been demanding for weeks in the comment section and Instagram DMs. And I can't blame you. This is a strain we cannot ignore. It's new to the market and definitely unique. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to Potty Mouth. We don't really know where the world is gonna go, but now everybody knows that you can't stop for too long, got to keep going. Bred by one of USA's most reputable breeders, the Humboldt Seed Company. As always, we're gonna be following this strain from seed to harvest and showing you everything we did along the way. But there is something that makes this episode different from all others I've posted on this channel. This exact plant you're about to watch grow was harvested, dried, cured, then submitted to the Cannabis Cup, La Copa de las Flores, this past weekend. And it took first place for the best flower in the indoor category. Wow. As you'll find out later in this episode, the competition was solid, and the fact that this flower took first place says a lot about the genetics, nutrients, lights, and grow techniques you're about to watch in this episode. Something familiar in this week's episode is the LED we're using. We got the brand new Vipar Spectra KS5000 500 watt LED grow light. We'll be including the LED distance, PPFD readings, and obviously final flower results so you can see how well she really performs. And by the end of this episode, you'll know if these genetics are worth picking up and if this LED and setup is right for you. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome to Homegrow TV, the internet's highest quality grow show. If you're like us and love seed to harvest videos, subscribe now because we got a ton on the way. All right, buckle up and get ready because this episode is officially starting. As always, to start off the seed to harvest, let's first talk about the genetics and the breeders who created it. I know we already talked about this in the Blueberry Muffin and Hella Jelly episode, but it's just so damn interesting that I gotta cover it again. Founded in 2001 by biologists in Humboldt County, California, they began breeding for patients under Prop 215. You know, you see a lot of second and third generation Humboldt farmers. The Humboldt Seed Company are known for being the leaders in specialized cannabis breeding and strain development. And in 2018, they hosted the world's largest pheno hunt through a collaborative genetic clone pursuit. Teaming with local farm friends, they chose the top percentile clones. All right, pheno hunting clipboard, pheno hunting vest. They've refined the genetics from this effort and have created new original strains, giving them a unique variety of coveted strains. Known for the unique stank in strains such as vanilla frosting, raspberry parfait, magic melon, pineapple upside down cake, and some cult favorites such as blueberry muffin, which we covered in a past episode. Whether it's being featured as strain of the year by Leafly, or making it to the cover of High Times, Skunk Magazine, shooting with Eric Nug shots, or winning multiple major cannabis cups in the US, this company has been making moves for a good minute. Actually, 21 years to be exact. And it was in January of this year at the Cannabis Cup in the mountains of Colombia in the city of Manizales where I met Ben from the Humboldt Seed Company. How, how are you liking it so far, bro? You've been here how many days? Uh, Stoke. This is my second trip this year. We've been doing it, putting a lot of miles down here, visiting the farms and talking to the growers and just getting to experience the culture that is cannabis in Colombia. After chatting with Ben for a bit, I decided to pick up the Blueberry Muffin, Potty Mouth, and Hella Jelly. Each now have their own episode. So for now, let's just talk about the Potty Mouth strain info. The Potty Mouth was first concocted by crossing Mountaintop Mint with Humboldt Pound Cake, which is really interesting because both were 2019 Humboldt Seed Company Pheno Hunt winners. 15 different variables we keep track of. 
You see, the Humboldt Seed Company does extensive pheno hunting every season, and this potty mouth was a selected winner of the 2020 Anchor Farm Pheno Hunt. Breeding chamber, selecting specific ones to use in our breeding program next year. Which one's your favorite? This one was calling my name structure-wise. After it was identified, Ridgeline Farms spent about a year doing R&D with their team to fine tune everything. And according to Jason Gilman from Ridgeline, the mountaintop mint stands out for its unique minty terpene profile. And the humble pound cake is a super producer with a terpene profile everyone is hyped about right now. To the degree of describing it like, oh, this is a fucking rose petal, this is a rotten orange. Like, no, no, now we have, you know, this is a baby's diaper with mixed tones of like deliciousness that I wanna smoke this. Like, what? Dude, it really is, it's, it's a really unique description. Potty Mouth stood out from thousands of cultivars and quickly became the team's favorite. And the team who did the R&D on this strain, Ridgeline Farms, has won several Emerald Cups. And when they asked for new hot genetics, this one really stood out for them. They say this line guarantees you'll have bag appeal, making your outdoor look like indoor, and your indoor like it's from another planet. I love that saying. They also say that the selection of this line was based primarily on its appearance, but it does have gassy terps with a hint of sweetness. And the Super Stony High comes on quickly for both head and body, with euphoric and relaxing effects. My goal with this strain is to hopefully get terps so unique that she ends up making it to my mother plant collection. We got a lot of work ahead of us, so let's jump into the veg phase. I've already covered a detailed week-to-week -week explanation of everything I did in veg in the Hella Jelly and Blueberry Muffin episode. So to not bore you with the exact same story as last time, I'm going to skip the repetitive stuff and just stick to the potty mouth specifics. I popped two potty mouth beans using the cotton pad method. We got 100% sprout rate and a really large, healthy taproot. It was time to plant her in the three gallon pot with a homemade mix of cocoa fiber and castings with Canna Consulting's Power Mix and Mycorrhiza. On day 12 after planting, the potty mouth was off to a good start and growing just as I'd hoped. It was time to unbox and set up our brand new Vipar Spectra KS5000. This LED just recently hit the market, and my first impression was how solid of a build she had. Another cool feature was the fact that the driver was unattached to the LED bar system, allowing me to hang it outside the tent or close to a fan inside the tent for cooler internal temps. This LED packs 500 watts into a size that fits perfect for a 4x4 tent. But with this power, and knowing I wanted to veg my ladies out so long, I decided to put her in a 5x5. Alright, let's get back to the potty mouth. At day 45 since planting, week 6 veg, and our two potty mouths were doing good and growing fast. Although one of the phenos was showing slight deficiencies. I supplemented her with some CalMag over the next few feedings, and you'll get to see how she adjusted in just a sec. It was interesting to see that both potty mouth phenos were growing taller than the Hella Jelly and Blueberry Muffin. She was definitely shaping up to be a tall plant. We transplanted her into her final pot size of 45 liters, or 11 gallons, and looking at her roots, we can see everything is nice and healthy. After transplant, we give her a solid defoliation and took clones. Continuing to the last week of veg at day 52 since we planted, and both potty mouth are growing fast and at a vicious rate. Both phenos looking similar in size, and you can see the pheno that was showing deficiencies is slowly working her way back to perfect health. Because so many of the families have grown back, it was time to do another defoliation.
one week later and take a look at the last day before getting kicked in a flower. I've noticed that both potty mouth drink faster than the other strains in the tent, leading them to get a little dry like you see right here. This is something you really want to watch out for as a grower because it can majorly damage the microbiology in your soil and slow down your plant's development. So yeah, I've got something I gotta improve at. Time to get him back in the tent and change the timer to 12-12. Bring him, bro, bring him all the way down those stairs. Oh, I was putting that one also on the right side, closer, closest to the camera. And this one here in the middle. Seven days later, on week one flower, and you can see the first little stretch into that transition. Both phenos are looking happy and healthy with no deficiencies. If we line up all three Humboldt strains I grew on this run, you can see the potty mouth is definitely the tallest, by far. They were loving the conditions in the tent that were set to the following. Fast forward to week four flower and things were developing nicely. Potty mouth is starting to fill out and with this bud style, I can already tell things are gonna eventually be dense, rock hard nugs of fire. She's already giving off a deep gas smell. So if you got a nosy neighbor, a carbon filter is definitely recommended for this strain. In the last episode, I mentioned for the first time I was testing the TNB CO2 enhancer for a little extra CO2 in the room. Basically shaking every day and praying that this was actually gonna make a difference. And after going through a few refill packs, I can honestly say I don't know if I'm gonna end up buying more for the future. I'm torn and I'd love to hear what you guys think about CO2 enhancers in the comments below. Anyway, at this point, the plants were on cruise control and all I had to do was make sure I didn't miss a single watering so these ladies could continue to fatten up. Welcome to week seven flower. And now we can finally see what potty mouth nugs look like in late flower. Beautiful golf ball nugs filled with trichomes and smelling dank. It was at this point I started getting really excited about potty mouth as a good competitor for cannabis cups. I was just imagining the terps I was smelling with a two month cure. It's something so deep and dank that it almost stings the nostrils. God, it's delicious and I'll go into every detail here in just a sec. And the rate she was maturing seemed like she was gonna take an extra week or two longer than the other strains in the room, but we'll have to let her cruise on to tell. Week nine, 64 days in a flower, and it was harvest day. This tall, purple potty mouth is absolutely gorgeous. All the top colas are beautiful golf balls that are for sure gonna weigh in nicely because of their density. Taking a closer look, and we can see she has solid trichome production as well. One of the two phenos was taking longer to mature her pistols and looked like she could be pushed further into flower. Under the scope, She's a little early for the picking, with a mix of clear and mostly milky with no amber. But this isn't necessarily good, bad, right or wrong. It depends on your goals, and I'll dive further into this in a future episode. And the effect always changes because you know molecules turn from THCA to THC then to CBN uh -huh. through degradation. So uh, that's why also I'm going to give you another tip. Um, for, <laughs> for cups, it's also good to cut you know, before it's amber, because yep. the process okay. of waiting and during it, um, it turns it's gonna, amber. It's gonna do that anyway. Yeah, it's gonna do that anyway. Interesting, I've had to cut early a few times just because I was... Her turps are musky as fuck, and reek of deep, dark, gassy earth. No fruits to compare on this one. She's pure gas, boys. Let's answer the ultimate question. 
Is the potty mouth worth growing? And did I keep a cut for the mother plant collection? Taking into account flower time, growth structure, and most importantly, turp profile, I'd say she's definitely approved by Homegrow TV. I totally get why this baby has been chosen on their massive pheno hunts. Well done and congrats to the team at the Humboldt Seed Company on this one, boys. And as far as keeping a cut, if you followed the channel for a minute or at least watched a few Seed to Harvest episodes, you'd know that I'm a fruity turp kind of guy. And this right here is fully dank, stank, gas, messier brain kind of turp with no fruit of any kind. So although delicious, and the reason I just took first place at the last Cannabis Cup I attended, she won't be making the mother plant room. So yeah, before we move on to our post-harvest smoke analysis and details about the Cannabis Cup this strain took first place in, let's quickly talk dry harvest weight. The potty mouth harvest clocked in at about 160 grams between the two plants. So it's definitely not a huge yield, but now that I've seen the plant's growth characteristics, I'd definitely say that this strain produced really well in a scrog style setup. Let's take a moment and revisit the Cannabis Cup from the past weekend. Welcome to the fourth annual Copa de las Flores hosted in Medellin, Colombia. This was the first cup I ever attended a year ago and was the event that got me hooked on competing at cups. Hola, dinero! It's one of the only cups I've attended that actually lets the gardeners participate in the judging process. And although our votes don't count as much as the invited judges, it's still fun to take part. It's a two day event with awesome music, great people, and cool brands sharing their products. It's definitely one of my favorite cups to date and highly recommend it to those of you thinking of visiting the Columbia cannabis scene. The award ceremony is always the most exciting part for me. And this is one I'll never forget. There was 26 entries between indoor and outdoor flower. And it all started with my favorite grow bro, Mr. Q, taking third place. He entered with a brand new seed stalker strain, Triton Biscotti Lime. I got a chance to film this plant a few times and test it at the cup. It definitely has a delicious, unique citrus baked cookie smell to it. And just as I thought it couldn't get any crazier, my other grow bro, back growing, takes second place. He entered with a strain from Perfect Tree Seeds called Mimos. Stank like a crazy cheese and smoked really well. Congrats to Back for this podium finish at his first ever cup. Next was the highlight of the year for me. Hace un año, esto fue el primer copa que competí en mi vida, aquí en Colombia. Copa de las Flores aquí y me cambió la vida. All I can say is what an honor, and I really encourage you gardeners to take part in your local cups. Time for something we've done just once before in the Seed to Harvest series. So please make sure you let me know if you like it. The Post Harvest Smoke Analysis. What is up my grow bro and welcome to the second post harvest analysis that we've ever done. Before we get started, like we said in the beginning of the episode, I want to say it again. Everything you're about to see in this segment and actually everything in this entire episode exists strictly for educational documentary purposes. And we're backing it up with science as much as we can, whether that is lab results or segments like this where we're actually going to dive into the effects the taste and do a little taste test of the potty mouth. We're gonna be doing it with dry flour and then we're going to also be doing it with extract, flour rosin. And even though that part wasn't in the episode, we actually did end up pressing something recently after the cup and well, I'm glad I get to share it here. So uh, the first interesting note I wanted to say and this is, I noticed it during the Cannabis Cup, after a two month cure on our potty mouth, 
it was something that when you open the jar, you notice the smell right away from quite a distance away, especially when there was wind at the event. So I would open this up, wow, and people were literally looking around, they would come over, and it was the stank of this potty mouth when cured is unreal. I went through probably a jar of it at the actual cannabis cup, just everyone sampling it after popping that open. It was hard to resist. Talking terps on the jar, again, everything I said in the video, this sucker right here is full gas, guys. Very earthy, gassy, and dank, like very strong and deep in the nose. So talking about our doobie and our dry flower, doing dry pull first, and this time I came prepared, guys, I got the doobie rolled. Oof, that gas just translates right through on that dry pole. So, let's hop into actually sparking this up and testing the effects. Yeah, turn into words and then I'll burst out like 31 birds off their perch on a birdhouse. They fly ignited. Again, guys, I do not recommend this in any way. I'm just doing it so we can figure out the effects of this potty mo- Wow, now it's like on the taste side, this is where it's like I'm almost starting to get that gasp and almost now on the pining, like on the pine side compared to like that earth or that clove. Mm, it had, does have a great taste, a very unique taste. Again, I'm on that fruity side, but even this for me is something unique enough for me to actually enjoy even not being a gas lover. Like pine tree pine cone mixed with that earth, but just back with that gas. Unreal, really nice. And even though we did harvesters so early, it has been probably about three months now since the actual harvest. And, you know, now actually trying this, you can tell a lot of the trichomes have definitely matured. Because we're going to let the effects kick in for a second, but I have a feeling like the rest of this jar has been going to be strong. So we'll check in in a second. Saying hot damn it, no harmful emissions. Want to savor my planet, so savor it with me. Flavor hits me, lip smacking this happy, crisp rapping for enjoyment. Okay, so I'm pretty sure it's only been one or two minutes, but it feels like it's been about five. And, you know, again, I, this is my first time doing a post harvest analysis with this strain. And I was smart enough to know that on camera right now, I wasn't going to go beyond, you know, the first little quarter, if that. She is strong, very cerebral, and also body. For me, it's been something that has been very productive later towards the day, in the evening, when I know I'm coming towards the last little sprint of my work day. It really does bring a good focus. It is really nice for me as a creative to be editing but it hasn't been the easiest one to start my day with and go all day with. And I feel like my eyes are just slowly dialing in and I'm getting more and more creative as the time goes on. Um, and yeah, time is definitely slowed down or you kind of lose your perception on it at this point. Yeah, let's move on to our extracts, our flower rosin. So for this segment, I think last time we did it, we had our old titanium and our actual torch. <laughs> Well, this time, we're going to a whole nother level. We got ourselves the Focus V from Carta, I think it is. And this was actually from Grobro, passed down from Grobro, Mr. Q, as he got a new one at the Cannabis Cup. And, well, now it resides here at Home Grow TV, and we are ever grateful, Mr. Q. Thank you. And especially for the segment. So we're going to be hitting some of the potty mouth. And before we do, I want to take a second and say again, this was done... A lot later than when we would have pressed, for example, the Hella Jelly in the Hella Jelly episode, which was pretty close after harvest. Like once we had the 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 RH dialed in on the flowers, it wasn't long into cure and it was actually like quite quick when we started pressing and it gave a beautiful result. Well, this potty mouth here was done much after cure. I would say almost again at that three month mark. So it pressed a lot darker and kind of interesting. Again, talking to, uh, to CV420, at the Cannabis Cup in Cali when he mentioned the actual degradation or the, the changing of the trichomes and the cannabinoids over time anyway, even after harvest. So I think right here it's actually even a prime example, even though we harvested early, even though we might have expected some clearer flower extract, the result here after cure was a lot darker. That being said, can't always judge a, a rosin on its color, most certainly not. A lot more on its texture, its taste, and then its, its effects obviously, and that's why we're here. So the terps definitely carry through to the flower rosin, but I wouldn't say as much on just a quick smell as the Hella Jelly, for example. 
So it is nice. It does have a smell. It does have a nose to it. Uh, but it's not the strongest right out of the box. So we're going to take a little sample here. And this is where it does get interesting because uh, it's the actual with the effects. And it's a lot of what we've seen with the flower doobie. Um, as we're going to see here, as long as the, with the effects, obviously this is much more potent. Medicef from Rosin Bogota, as he was uh, pressing and doing the test press with the with the potty mouth, he was actually really surprised on the return we got, guys. Even especially with the length of time it went, you know, he's noticed over time, fresh flower, right, right when you hit that mark and you're starting cure is a great time to press for return, clarity, and that kind of stuff, depending obviously when you harvested your flower. But potty mouth, even after that cure, returned amazingly. Uh, I want to say, you know, first press, we were much above 15, into that 15 to 20%. But after that second to third press, just double checking what we could get, I think we were also in that 30% range, which was really nice to see. And we kind of knew this going into it, that Pine with was supposed to be a really good um, extractor. And with that test, even in not ideal conditions, it really did do well. So let's get to the effects part. So five little buttons to turn this sucker on. All right, she's on. One button, we're gonna use at medium power, which I've kind of been liking, two bars on, and this has just made life so much more efficient. Look, she's already on. Wow, that was quick. No torch, no nothing. And she actually burns for quite a long time. I think it's 30 second hit. You can take your time, hit, obviously share it. Wow, very smooth. Let's see how the effects kick in. As far as flavors, which we can talk about here right away, I was also getting that kind of uh, pine spicy on the release. Actually, quite different. Uh, funny enough, from from the 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 newbie, from the 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 newbie, the the newbie. But now that I'm thinking about it, actually, maybe it was this wasn't fully cleaned either. And obviously, for perfect taste test. This should have been cleaned, and actually you should hit it on a lower level to really just taste the terps. Should hit it on the lowest level possible. But that being said, the tastes are actually really nice, and nice on that exhale, really nice. So let's see, let's give it a few minutes, and let's see how much stronger this really is than the uh, dry flower doobie. Okay, wow, yeah. Again, just really quick into it, just in a minute, under two, definitely, <laughs> feeling the strong effects on this and much different if we again compare it to something when you say strong that can be very vague but when I compare it to one of last week's episodes with uh, Hella Jelly for example it was very light um, compared to this uh, wow this this can be I think really good for Netflix at the night and relax like very strong on the body really good I think to relax and maybe kind of shut it down and wow wow Hmm. Yeah, she's strong. Wow. Okay. Thanks for uh, sticking to this part of the video, guys. Again, any feedback on this segment of the post-harvest analysis is greatly appreciated. Well, yeah, and anything else you might want to see in this segment? Any ideas to add to it? Let me know as well. All right, guys, let's continue the episode. Now, let's take a second to talk about our 500 watt KS5000 from Vipar Spectra. Ever since I posted my first share on Instagram, I've been getting riddled with questions and interest about this light. And also, I know a lot of you guys are already running it now, and I totally get why. This LED is quality and it shows in the final flowers. It's definitely going to be sticking around the garden for a while. And at $599, this is probably the most powerful light you can fit in a 4x4. Or if you're like me, she makes a great fit for a 5x5 too. If you're looking for an upgrade and considering Vipar Spectra as your next light, I've included a discount code in the description section below. And if you buy one using that code, we make a small affiliate commission. But that's not why I created this video. It's here to entertain and to educate you. And if I've done that in any way over the last 20 minutes, please give this video a like and this channel a subscribe. It helps more than you know. Thank you for staying to the end of this episode. Much love, and we'll see you next week on Homegrown TV.